All right, good morning, fifth grade. Welcome to Math Lesson 59. Today we are talking about subtracting a fraction from one whole. So let's just do a quick little review. Remember, any fraction with the same numerator and denominator equals one whole. And they say there is a infinite amount of fractions that equal one whole. That word infinite is based on the word infinity. Most fifth graders know that word. That means it goes on and on forever and it never ends, right? So you can have one whole or you could call it two halves or three thirds or four fourths or five fifths, 12 twelfths. You could call it 13 thirteenths, but I couldn't find a picture for that one. And it just goes on and on forever, as long as it has the same numerator, the top number, and denominator, the bottom number. So now that we know that, we're going to run into some problems periodically like this. Write a fraction equal to 1. We just got done saying if it's equal to 1, it's got the same numerator and denominator. So if they want a fraction equal to 1 that has a denominator of 4, well, if it's equal to 1, the numerator also has to be 4, right? 4 fourths equals 1. So when it comes time to subtract whole numbers and fractions, Let's jump back to about second or third grade here for a second. And you were taught back in the day, you start on the right hand side and if you try to subtract starting with two and take away nine, that's not gonna work and you had to go and borrow, right? And you brought one over to this side, really? It was 10 you brought over. But that's the way we're trained in to do it, right? So the same thing happens when you're trying to add and subtract whole numbers and fractions. Line them up vertically. Most of the mistakes I see are kids trying to do it all in their head. Line them up vertically. Make sure you put the whole numbers on one side, the fractions on another, and you may have to borrow. So if you take a look here, nothing, and you're trying to subtract two thirds. Well, you can't start with nothing and take away two thirds. You're gonna have to go and borrow, right? So I'm gonna have to bring one over into the fraction side. But I don't want to just write out one here because this is the fraction side. I got to write a fraction equal to one. And I want to make sure it works with a denominator of three. If my bottom fraction is thirds, I better write this as a third. So if I'm trying to make it equal one, my numerator also better be three. Three thirds equals this one that I borrowed. Just when I bring it over, I gotta write it as a fraction. A fraction equal to one. All right, we're ready to subtract now. Three thirds minus two thirds, hey, that's one third. But let's take a look here because I sometimes get kids who want to go zero minus nothing is zero and they'll write a big old zero right here. Now, haven't we said for a long time now, nothing is the same as zero. You don't say, oh, I ate zero and a third pizza. No, you would just say, I ate a third of a pizza, right? Let's go and try this one. Here I have the whole number four, and I'm trying to subtract one and one sixth. I got my whole numbers on one side, 
my fraction on the other side. And I'm dealing in sixth, right? So I obviously am going to have to borrow. So I'm going to first cross out that four, make this a three, and I'm going to bring over one to the fraction side. I have to write a fraction equal to one with the denominator of six. So that sounds like six six, right? Six six minus one six. That's going to give you five six. Three minus one, that's going to equal two. And I guarantee if you try to do it all in your head, about 50% of the time kids forget about the whole number side. So just go ahead and take the extra 10 seconds and write it out on a piece of paper. Let's try one like this. Even if the book has them laid out horizontally, we want to go and position them vertically up and down, right? I got my whole numbers on one side, I got my fractions on the other, and I'm ready to go to town. I can't start with nothing and try to take away three sevenths. So let's go ahead and borrow. Now I need to bring one whole over to the fraction side. I am dealing in sevenths here. So let's go ahead and write it as seven sevenths. Seven sevenths equals that one whole we just borrowed, right? Now I can subtract seven sevenths minus three sevenths. That's going to give us four sevenths. And let's go over here. Seven minus three, hey, that equals four as well. So I have four and four sevenths. Let's try one more. Just to change it up a little bit, though, this time we're going to be adding. Let's take a look at what's going on here. I got my whole numbers on one side, my fractions on the other. Three fifths plus two fifths, well, three plus two. That's going to give us five fifths, right? But do I want to write five fifths right here? Five fifths is equal to one whole, right? You're not going to put five fifths on the fraction side, put one on the whole number side. Let's go and add them up now. Three plus one more plus four. That sounds like a grand total of eight. Check out this guy here. Nick and Will cooked two large pizzas. Nick ate four-sixths of one pizza, and Will ate two-sixths of the other. What amount of pizza was eaten? Well, you could go ahead here. You had four-sixths. And two six more. Well, we could go ahead and add them all up. What do I got there? That sounds to me like I have six six. But do you really want to say, oh, they ate six sixth of a pizza? No way. They really ate one whole pizza because the numerator and the denominator are the same. So it equals one whole. Let's check out this guy here. We got to compare four and five fifths compared to five. Well, he said if it's the same numerator and denominator, that really equals one. So I have four plus one more. Hey, that really equals five. Five compared to five. Sounds to me like they're equal, right? Let's try it over here. Three-thirds, that really equals one. 
So here I have five plus one more. That's really six. So seven compared to six. Crocodile smelt is going after that seven every time. Check out this guy. Mason spent one and a half hours doing homework and then two and a half hours playing video games. How many hours did he spend in all? There is your clue word that you are doing an adding problem. So you got one and a half hours doing the homework, two and a half hours doing the video games, and then in all means that we are adding, right? A half plus a half. Well, yeah, it is two halves, but I don't want to write two halves on the fraction side. I'll just bring it up over here as one whole because two halves really is one whole, right? Now one plus one more plus two, that's going to give us a grand total of four hours. And that is the end. Trust me, take three extra seconds and a scratch piece of paper on the Socrative quiz, and you will be much, much happier. Good luck.